Welcome to the second challenge. Uh, so let's take a look at the technical drawing. It looks like some sort of a holder and we have a major cut here. We've got a piece that's been taken out, but we also have a wedge that goes through the center of it here to strengthen it. But notice we've got some decoration now as well in the model. We've got two chamfers here and here. The best place would be to start looking down the model. Let's head into soft space and start sketching. So now using the arc tool, I can constrain the arc to be on the Y axis by selecting the axis and the point and clicking here, constrain point on line. Do the same thing here. Let's anchor the arc at the origin in the same way and specify the diameter of the circle to be 30 millimeters. Now we're using the sketch line segment tool because I want to include the chamfers. And of course, like we did in the first challenge, we need to constrain the orientation of the lines by stating if they're horizontal or vertical. Just remember that if your lines look horizontal or vertical, but don't have the corresponding letter, then they're not. You need to specify if they're horizontal or vertical using the constraint buttons here. Let's constrain the length of this one to be 60 millimeters. I notice I've broken the model, well, changed the shape. So let me just adjust it a bit. These two lines have to be equal lengths. So I've selected them and now I need to click here, constrain equal length. And that line here, that dash line means equal length. I'll constrain this line to be 12 millimeters. And we're getting there. Keep a close eye on your workflow in the properties panel here. We've got two degrees of freedom now, and that's because we've not sorted out the chamfers. Uh, the technical drawing says that chamfers have a height and width of nine millimeters. And what that means is if I was to draw a triangle on the outside or the inside of the model like this, and making sure that this line is horizontal, so I create a right angle triangle. What it's saying is that these two lines have to be equal length and they have to be nine millimeters each for this chamfer to be correct. So let's do that. Currently it's complaining that I've not completed the contour. I'm not going to create a contour. I want these two lines to help guide me create a proper chamfer here. So I can select the two lines and because they're going to be my guides, I click the G button on the keyboard to create two guidelines for me and notice that they've changed color. So let's specify that they're both equal in length. And that means I can now specify the length of one of them to be nine millimeters. And that chamfer now is correctly dimensioned. If you look now in the properties panel, we've got zero degrees of freedom. Why, why do you say, well, when you're working on a model, as you keep constraining things, we didn't need to constrain anything up here because as we move things about and constrained everything, this line is now, um, has the right length and orientation to be exactly the same as this one. So with zero degrees of freedom, let's extrude the model, select the extruded axes and constrain it to be 30 millimeters. And you can slowly see that it's taking shape. Next thing I'm going to work on is the circle, is the hole that goes through the model. So I can select that point and create a new work plane. But notice it didn't do it right. It did, well, it did do it right. It's just that it's not showing me in the way I want it to be shown in the work plane. So I can shift it around and do it again. If you try and get it to the, the view that you want and then select the point and click the button, you'll get the view that you want. Let's use the circle tool. Click on the middle here and go outwards. So now we have a position circle, but we need to specify the diameter of it. Select the constraint distance and the, the radius is given. It's seven and a half millimeters. So the diameter will be 15 millimeters. Now we've got zero degrees of freedom and we can extrude that clicking uh, this button here and taking the difference. 
and you can see it's gone all the way through so we need it to be flushed against the bottom surface so you select the point here and the surface and then you click here constraint points to be on the plane just like that we're getting there um, the next logical part of the workflow would be to create the cut create a new work plane to do that but to be more specific I'm going to select this line and that line and the point create a new work plane uh, if you make a mistake like I've just done there where I've changed the orientation of the model you can go back to your work plane by clicking this button here let's go to the rectangle tool I'm going to constrain the rectangle now to be on top of the plane so select that point on this line and click constrain points to line and same here same thing there it's just the way I prefer to do stuff in my uh, workflow is to do it this way I don't like to draw rectangles directly onto contour lines and with we've got one degree of freedom and that's because I can change the size of the rectangle let's now specify the length of this rectangle and if you look closely at the technical drawing it tells us that the distance from the center of the hole to this um, rectangle side is 18 millimeters and I can do it that way if I want okay I could try and work out what this length is here but I've done it the easier way here now we've got zero degrees of freedom that means I can extrude and select difference and if I want, I can click and drag one of the extruded points um, to where I want it. But to specify how much you select the one of the extruded axes and click Constrain Distance. And I want it to be 21 millimeters. And that's because in the technical drawing, the height of the model is 30, but the depth of it down here is 9 millimeters. The last thing we need to do now is create the wedge. And to do that, I need to place three points strategically in the model to create a triangle, which I can then extrude to create the wedge. Let's do that. Let's put two points here first. I'll select these two lines on the points to create a new work plane. I'll select the points tool now. I'm just going to place it here. That is now flushed with this new work plane that we've created. So I can select it and this line. And to get it in the middle of the line, all you have to do is create M for middle or midpoint. That's now going to put the point at the midpoint of that line. And we can do the same thing over here. I can put that point anywhere I like. Select that line and hit M again. Let me show you. So if I rotate the model, you can see we've got two strategically placed points now. And the last point I want is over here. So I'm going to create a new work plane. And I want this point to be at the midpoint of this line here. Clicking M on the keyboard again. So now we've got three points for creating a triangle. We need another work plane now for creating that triangle. So let's select that point and click create new work plane. Go back to line segment tool and we're currently creating a triangle that's going in the middle of the shape there that's why you can't see it now that we've got uh, zero degrees of freedom we can now extrude that triangle but notice that when we've extruded it it's done so on one side of the triangle not on both sides symmetrical on both sides of it we need to click on the radio button to sided extrusion if I want to I can click and drag on one of the points down here to change the width of the wedge but let's just hit this line and specify its length to be seven millimeters and I think that's done and have a look click on home and hide all and you can see that we've completed that model so a quick summary of things we've covered. We selected the correct place to start at the model, and that was at the surface that would give us the chamfers. We then uh, created the chamfers using guidelines, and then we created the wedge in the same way, but using guide points. We looked at extruding the triangle in a two-sided way, symmetrical on both sides. Well, let's see if we can use some of the skills we've learned to solve the third one. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.